What's going on, my North County fam? I'm your girl, Kelly, here to give you the rundown of what happened in St. Louis County government this week, and this is what you need to know. So first, there was a lot of discussion around legislation that would change an already existing piece of legislation, um, impacting involvement of minority and women-owned businesses uh, regarding contractors work in St. Louis County projects. So Councilman Trakis introduced this legislation. Like I said, it would tweak some already existing legislation on the books. Um, and so what are his tweaks? So one, his tweaks would allow prime contractors to include their own women minority owned business credentials when bidding for St. Louis County projects. And the second tweak, major tweak, um, it would establish uh, women minority owned business involvement goals per individual contractor per project. So currently contractors bidding for St. Louis County projects are required to have 24.9% of contractors that are classified as minority women, minority women owned businesses. So Councilman Trakis, he didn't do this work alone, right? He worked with, talked with, consulted with uh, contractors. Also, um, he had several speakers present as well to discuss this uh, bill. Uh, Nate Adams, who is, serves as the Director of Minority Business Development and Compliance for St. Louis County. Greg Tater, who works He's the director of procurement for St. Louis County, as well as uh, Vita Jeffrey, who serves as the chief diversity officer for St. Louis County. So again, they were present speaking in support of the, the, these tweaks. And so, you know, why do they feel that they're necessary? So they believe that um, these changes will make the contractor bids more competitive and increase overall participation among contractors, especially when you're looking at the smaller jobs. So this is the example that they provided. Let's say there's a $60,000 project, um, a prime contractor, you know, has to hire a subcontractor to meet that percentage. So that $60,000 job now is a $30,000 job. And who's going to bid for that? Ain't nobody going to bid for that. That's who. So they're saying that these changes will really help alleviate some of those challenges. So in addition to those folks, um, like I mentioned, contractors also were in support of these tweaks. There are a couple of concerns expressed. One um, was that they want to make sure, council members want to make sure that there is some type of a training component um, still included in the legislation just so that everybody on the same page and they know what it is when it comes to minority women-owned business enterprises, the program, the process, et cetera, et cetera, so no one's confused or don't know what's going on. And the second thing, Councilwoman Webb, she expressed that she thinks there should be a minimum goal when it comes to that percentage of involvement of minority women-owned contractors working um, on St. Louis County projects. And Chairwoman Day, she said, look, y'all, we're going to be getting a hell of a lot of this infrastructure coin coming down the line, so we really need to make sure we get this right. So I'm sure there is more to come regarding this um, important matter. And then the second thing y'all need to know more discussion about St. Louis County's Property Assess Clean Energy Program, also known as PACE. So through the PACE program, homeowners can get clean and renewable energy improvements to their properties by getting a loan, and the loan is paid through folks' uh, property taxes. And the, the loan is based on, you know, whatever the home improvement is, also, uh, you know, the equity within the home as well as the home's um, assessed value. And so this helps folks that they don't have the coins up front to make those improvements. Um, and the, the concern is that there have been reports, this was published in a national publication last year, there are people that have lost their homes due to the increased cost in their property taxes because, again, they pay their loan through their property taxes. And some folks, you know, they can't afford to pay that cost through some predatory-ish. And as a result, you know, when you can't pay your property taxes, you lose your home. So, um, you know, up for debate was really how to move forward with the PACE program in St. Louis County, either one, scrap it all together, or two, really um, make changes to the existing legislation to make sure that people ain't out here losing their homes. So it's important to know, y'all, even if the county council decides to eliminate this PACE program altogether, um, there's still um, a similar program that operates 
in municipalities. So St. Louis County's PACE program uh, jurisdiction is an unincorporated St. Louis County. However, the municipalities, uh, not all of them, but some of them participate in a similar program operated through the state of Missouri, the Missouri Clean Energy District Program. So I'm just letting you know. So there were 10 speakers. Yes, 10 speakers. Um, speaking either for or against uh, St. Louis County's PACE program. Those wanting to scrap the PACE program, again, expressing issues about folks losing their homes and all that, um, were Zake, well, excuse me, Jake Zimmerman, who serves as the St. Louis County Assessor, and David Stokes, uh, who's from the Show Me Institute. And there were several folks in support of the PACE program, uh, the Sierra Club, the NAACP, um, and also Y Green was there uh, speaking in support of it. And Y Green, they serve as the administrator of the St. Louis County PACE program. There were representatives from Spire and Ameren as well present, and they weren't speaking in favor of or against uh, St. Louis County's PACE program, but they wanted people to know about their, uh, both of their companies' PAYS program, P-A-Y-S, pay as you save. And it's pretty much the same thing as the PACE program, P-A-C-E program, except it's, um, you know, it's regarding utility. So if you want to make some utility upgrades, um, those changes will be included um, in the bill and you pay for them through your utility bill. So if you didn't know, about that program, those programs, now you know. So as I mentioned, there's a representative a representative from Y Green, um, you know, and Y Green administers St. Louis County's PACE program. Her name's Miss Crystal Crawford. And she said, look, I'm here because I'm tired of y'all lying about the work that we doing. So I'm here to give y'all some straight receipts and some straight facts of what it is. She said, first off, regarding, you know, people losing their homes and all this other stuff. She's like, pause. Of the 337 residential projects completed through St. Louis County's PACE program since it started in 2017, five have been delinquent with three years, 33 have been delinquent with two years, 13 have been delinquent with one year. And she said that, you know, they extend a lot of effort and they reach out to people when they hit, when they fall into delinquency status. She said, we call people, to see what's going on and also to work with them to make sure that they get back on track on their payments. She also mentioned that, look, we not out here trying to be on some predatory ish. Okay. Like, so she said that they work with the Sierra club, the NAACP, as well as other stakeholders, um, on this community benefits agreement, um, that really fleshes out some of the uh, protections of folks that participate in this program. So she said, no, nah, we ain't, we ain't on no predatory stuff, y'all. Um, we really want to work with people. And the third point she expressed was, look, we really are a resource. This is really a tool for homeowners that feel like they have no other place to turn to, you know, when their furnace goes out. And y'all know it's been cold in that thing lately. So imagine that your furnace goes out, you know, it's, you can't, you don't have a credit card. You can't just charge it, uh, you know, when you go to the Home Depot, everybody ain't got it like that. So the PACE program, it helps folks that don't have that cash up front to make sure that they have a furnace and they have heat, um, you know, when it's really cold to make sure their families don't freeze. So um, and she got kind of emotional talking about that. So what's next? Councilwoman Dunaway, who's been spearheading this effort, said she'd follow up with the council members to see how they're feeling and kind of go from there. So to be continued on that as well, y'all. And then the last thing y'all need to know this week, there were several bills passed um, by the county council, and I just really wanted to let y'all know about these bills. So the first bill I'm, I'm going to highlight here, bill number eight, it was passed, sponsored by Councilwoman Webb, and it tweaks existing legislation that requires contractors with construction projects costing greater than $75,000 that they participate in apprenticeship programs registered with the U.S. Department of Labor. Everybody voted in favor of this piece of legislation except Councilman Harder. <clears throat> There are also bills passed providing coin uh, that will support the St. Louis Police Department. So there was a bill passed accepting a grant of up to $750,000 to support the Multi-Jurisdictional Human Trafficking Task Force. Also, there's a bill passed accepting a grant of up to $39,750 subject to a local match requirement to support the police department's participation in the 2021 Body Worn Camera Grant Program. 
And lastly, but surely not least, there was a resolution passed supporting submission of an application for a grant that will get the Kenlock Park project going. So uh, yes, y'all, Kenlock Park will be renovated. Um, and this renovation will consist of a playground, a shelter, restroom, athletic field, walking path, and yes, basketball courts. The total estimated cost of the project is close to $1.3 million, hence why they applying for that grant to get them coins. So that's all I have for you this week. Please stay safe out there and you will see me soon. Peace.